Let's do some examples with this quantum state. First we need to normalize it, and then let's look at the probability of each possible measurement we would make. So when I write it down this way, we kind of have a problem in that it's not a good ket state. It's not normalized. And I can look at this just by kind of recognizing eventually you'll get quite good at looking and just identifying that this can't be a possibly normalized state. So it's good to always get in the habit of saying there's some coefficient which is going to be our normalization coefficient. So there's two possible approaches you can take here. You can either use the relationship between these two coefficients and the fact that their magnitude squared must equal one, or you can actually do the inner product of this with itself and then from that derive the result that uh, the magnitude of this squared plus the magnitude of that squared must equal one. So let's really quick go through doing this with the uh, inner product with itself. So when I say that I want uh, psi bracketed with itself, we're going to first have the corresponding bra state. Now don't forget about this coefficient of normalization, which is what we're going to find. And any time that we're transforming from a ket to a bra, we need to take the complex conjugate. So this is going to come out front, complex conjugate, and then I have two with my ket spin up. And then, now notice here I have three i. So from going from the ket to the bra, we need that complex conjugate, so that becomes negative three i, and I have my down bra. And then I use lots and lots of grouping symbols. Um, we again have this coefficient of normalization, and now I have just my original ket state as written above. Okay. So now we go through, and again, we're going to FOIL. Now, if you've done this enough time, you might start to know that when you FOIL the plus with the minus, it's going to be zero. And when you FOIL the minus with the plus, it's going to be zero. So if we write this out carefully, we can start skipping some steps, but you really want to be careful. So notice that these two scalars are out front of everything. So I'm going to pull them out front, and now I'm going to have what's happening on the inside. So I'm going to have two times two, uh, spin up, bracket spin up, and now this term from here to there is going to be zero, and then this term to here is going to be zero. So what I'm left with is this fourth term, and I'm going to do this as negative three i times three i, and now again minus, minus. So if you don't understand why those were zero, again, it's because minus with plus equals zero or plus with minus equals zero. If you're not quite comfortable with this, just do out every term. My board is limited, so it really helps if I can start dropping some terms. So now what we have is that our inner product is going to equal magnitude of c squared, and now this equals one and this equals one. Oops, that wasn't a one though, was it? That's a one. So two times two is four, and now I have minus, but I have an i squared. So this becomes plus nine. And now what do we have if we inner product a normalized vector with a normalized ket with itself is that we should have one. So what we're left with here is an equation that says the magnitude of c squared times four plus nine is 13 equals one. So the magnitude of c squared equals one over 13. Now, obviously we can then have a few choices here. Now c could be a complex number, which means we have some unknown complex phase. So we could say that this is negative one over square root of 13, but it's totally reasonable to choose this constant to be real and positive. It doesn't have to be. But mathematically, it's not going to matter if we give it a complex phase. So what's a good choice here is to, to say that c is just equal to the square root of 1 over 13, and it's completely reasonable to write that as 1 over 13. So this is our, our starting point now. We have a normalized state, and from this we can talk about individual measurements, but it wouldn't have made sense to do that before normalizing it. 
So in the next video, we can now talk about the probability of measuring spin up and measuring spin down from this state based on the normalized vector.